time we are talking about open education. I just want to make sure you are in the right room because there's so much on offer today, isn't there? Great. So welcome to our session and welcome to our online participants and participants here in the room together. You've been in the session before, so you know what we're doing. Basically, we have two short presentations to get us going, get us really into, you know, into the topic and into the challenges. Then we will take time together to identify challenges in open education. And then we will look at, okay, these are the challenges, what are some solutions, what are some things we can do? My task is to get us um, by a quarter past three to a point where we can feed back three action points, concrete things that we will be taking forward as a result of this session. And we did it in the session before, I'm absolutely confident we will do it here as well. I have such pleasure in, in, a, in, in welcoming our speakers, I'll, ex I'll introduce them in a second, just as a repetition, those of you online, Emma Sperry is here with me, and Emma is mastering the technology, so we really want to make sure that you feel as included as if you were here in the room with us, which means if you want to make a contribution and speak yourself, just indicate it to Emma, the camera will go switch off your camera and mute yourself and then contribute and we will see you on the screen. If you'd rather just put something in the chat and then Emma reads it out, that is an option you have as well. But we definitely want to make sure that you, you, know, you come in, share your ideas and your thoughts. And then in person here, we obviously have, you know, we're in the room, we can see each other, but I'm always very keen in a hybrid situation that we make sure we don't forget people who are watching us on the screens. And as you've done before, if you want to contribute, just raise your hand. And then Fiona and I will make sure you know you get a microphone and then you can contribute. It's really simple, isn't it? Okay. So I'm delighted because we have two speakers with us, and they will be telling us their research and their ideas about education. And first is Maria, Maria Soledad Ramirez Montoya. She is the research professor at the Institute for the Future of Education at Technology. Technologico de Monterey? Yes. Yes, great. And then afterwards, here I'm, I'm practicing my Dutch today, is Leonie Kweinhardt de May. She is Professor and Vice Dean of the Faculty of Social and Behavioral Sciences at Utrecht University. <laughs> so Maria has offered to go first, and then we'll switch over. Over to you, Maria. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. I'm very happy to stay here in Leeds University with you sharing ideas about open education, and thank, and thank you for this opportunity. A few years ago, we had the opportunity to watch the film, Pay It Forward, or Chain of Favor, Cadena de Favores in Spanish. Do you remember? The one where uh, we were invited to open our eyes and become aware of how we can possibly affect the well-being of others. There were histories of altruists, concern for the common goods, trust as a basis for action and impact in the world. A similar chain that Leonique and I uh, will invite you to think and act on today in this field of open education and the declaration of the Knowledge Equity Network, Ken. The aim of this section will be to share some ideas about open education, open practice, open educational resources, and to pose some questions to you to invite reflection and to and share action too, of course. As all of you will know that in the year 22, UNESCO invite university to open knowledge. That is when we start to hear about open educational resources, OER, open science, open practice, open all, and open uh, platform too. This development that led to various declarations, and recently in 2019, UNESCO issued five recommendations to member countries. One, capacity building to increase to ability to create, access, reuse, repurpose, adapt, and redistribute OER. Two, development of super, supportive uh, policies that encourage government 
educational authorities and educational institutions to implement OER and open education. F3, effective, inclusive, and equitable access to quality OER that promotes the adoption of OER strategies and program. Four, promote the creation of sustainability model for open educational resources and open practice. Five, promotion, support, and facilitation of international cooperation like we are here today. In the same vein, last week we had in Paris the celebration of the 30th anniversary of the UNESCO chair with the theme, Transforming Knowledge for Use and Sustainable Future, where the recurring themes were the call to build together the future of education with interdisciplinary collaboration, equity, construction, and actions. Ideas connect knowledge for social transformation, of course. Many ideas were put forward, but there were clearly shared lines. Collective action, hospitability, inclusion, available, common goods, interdisciplinary, co-construction, network for sharing values, data, technologies. As a link in the open education chair, today we have a new invitation through the Ken Declaration, which starts from the principle of universality, collaboration, inclusion, and the sustainability as substantial element for all. It gives us general recommendation for creating a culture of openness, access, equity, and co-creation. It makes recommendation for institutions, funding agencies, publishers, and for ourselves. As active actor for open education, basis on collaboration, discovery, and knowledge creation. Again, this background, I would now like to share with you some brief reflection in open education practice. In the Open Education Journal, we can say that we have come a long way and still have great barriers, of course. For example, we have seen the amount of open education resources grow. However, and we still have the barrier that they cannot be shared in different language and with attention to diversity. We are increasing the possibility of open education resources in terms of their use, production, dissemination, and mobilization in formal and no formal institutions. But we know that we still have large gaps between the production of value resources and their integration into educational practice that support lifelong learning. We also seen evidence of open network making an impact in the community where they direct their efforts. However, we also know that this impact is reduced for vulnerable population where basic electricity and internet service are not available. We have witnessed the growth of institutional thematic repository, but we also know that their perspective academic community are not taking advantage of this infrastructure. Not to mention the institution <coughs> of which there are still many that do not have repositories yet. We are aware of change in teaching evaluation practice where the evaluation is based on the production in the repository, but this practice is still far from being mainstream. We rejoice uh, and very happy when we learn about international, such as those of UNESCO, national and institutional policies. But when we analyze this adoption, we conclude that there is still a need to grow in the monitoring and evaluation of the fulfillment of these policies. And so, I could go on with a long list of open education challenges of step forward and intermittent stop. And in this evolu uh, evolution, we know that as a actor, we have a commitment to the democratization of knowledge, to education for peace, solidarity, equity, and intergenerational duty. Following this invitation to collaborate with Ken today, I would like to ask you, how meet uh, each of us contribute to create a culture of open access in our institution and in our context? 
How can we generate open practice that promote the generation of value for and useful knowledge for the betterment of society and the common goods? And just as I begin this story by referring to the film Chains of Favor, Cadena de Favores, so I would like to invite you to think about this. What can be your link in these chains in order to be an active actor and contribute to the opening up of knowledge, equity, and quality education for all? And finally, I would like to share with you a phrase for the Maya, the Maya in the South Mexico and in Central Latin America. The Mayas, uh, they every day, express this concept of unity in their daily grating. In lack age, which means I'm another you. To which they replay, a la ken, which means you are another me. Thank you so much. Oh. What a beautiful ending. You are another me. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you, Maria. Like yes. <laughs> Leonique, thank you so much. And then we'll, I'll invite comments to the two presentations once Leonique has given us her, her talk. Thank you very much, and thank you, my soul. So uh, I was asked to give a provocational speech, so that's what I've tried to do. So uh, thank you for setting the stage, and I'll try to provoke a little bit. Um, on this topic, so first of all, I want to start that we at Utrecht University wholeheartedly endorse the responsibility that we need to take as universities to increase and, uh, the efforts to open up and share our knowledge and make equal as access uh, to knowledge and education possible. So we really strive for that. We have ma made uh, large steps with a number of others, uh, specifically on the research uh, path for open access and making also data uh, available, fair data. But the uh, importance of aiming for open education within at least the Netherlands is still, well, much needed, I think. So uh, we are working on that. But when we talk about open education, we need to think about the definition. So uh, within Utrecht University, we talked with a lot of people and we heard a lot of different terms uh, related to that accessibility, diversity and inclusion, but very often also open educational resources. And that's also, well, what you talked about and what we saw in a declaration. And um, we think that it's really important to think about what our goals are and if open educational resources is then the whole story and, if, and also when we do it, in what way and which serves the, our aim and our goal. Um, so although open educational materials and resources are important, I would like to make a plea to look closely at what we aim for and also maybe if we look at open educational resources, maybe beyond that. Um, so making educational resources openly available sounds very noble and I think we all strive for that. But. Um, I think there's also a number of risks involved, so I want to talk to you about that. So, um, if we r reduce open education to our resources, sharing uh, our resources, don't we just reduce our education to, it seems like, that our materials are whole, our whole education. And we all know, at least all the teachers in the room, and well, everyone actually has been in a classroom at some point in their life, we know that's not the whole story. And in higher education, there's so much more that we strive for than just the materials, right? We have a PowerPoint, we have an exercise, but that's not the whole story. We want to exchange our ideas with our students. They personally develop, or at least we try to give them the chance to have that, to think about the societal um, uh, problems that there are and talk with them about that. And there is a risk if we just say we are talking about open educational resources, that we just say, okay, 75% should be open, that we start counting. Okay, I have 100% of my resources here, I open 75%. Um, and again, I try to provoke here, 
but uh, that's not the way. Then we are going to check, have a checklist for each teacher. Is that what you want? And I think that's not what we want. So we want to make our education more open and more accessible and more available. So we need to think how to do that to make our resources more open and to do that. And I think counting is not the way. Um, uh, and so although we completely agree on the importance of open education and also the uh, educational materials, um, we also want to think about what is our goal, like I said in the beginning, and is the OOR, the open educational resources, the only solution for that? Um, so shouldn't we, well, think about accessibility, like I said, but also about how to make it easy for the teachers. So I think that one of the solutions for the open educational resources is less on making it all available. To be honest, we are trying to do this. And what we notice is that a lot of teachers say, oh yeah, that's fine, here are my materials, good luck with that. And no one actually ever finds it and searches for it. And actually none of the teachers are kind of willing to use materials from the others. So then it's like, what are we doing? We are like promoting everyone to put their materials online. Well, they do that, but they don't work together. And we have some brilliant examples of where it does work. And that almost always is when people collaborate. So for example, we have um, some of our nursing schools in the Netherlands, they have joined up and they um, made materials together and they put it in the open source uh, materials that we have in the Netherlands, and now all those schools can use that. So I think that's a brilliant way, and hopefully it will also be translated in English, and then it can be used broader for people who want to. But so I think that might be a for, far more fruitful way to uh, look at that. Um, but like I said, open education materials is not the only uh, part of open education. Um, we think that we need also to think about what the content of our education is. Because our students, like uh, I think uh, Simone this morning also said, th our students are the future. They are the leaders of the future. They are the people who make our future. Shouldn't we also commit to think about how we should help them to become open citizens, to have an open mind and an open attitude? And that's not just by being open ourselves. Well, it's a good start, I think. So as a communi academic community, we need to be open. And you know, our staff needs to be open. But we should also think about how we can promote that with, within our education. So don't we need to teach our students how they can be open so they can contribute in their field to, uh, to, to get a more open society so that they can share their knowledge? Um, and also for them to take different perspectives, especially in the world that we live in now, that we see that all these different and strong ideas, don't, shouldn't we in higher education, but actually in all education, but also in our higher education, strive to think with our students to take different perspectives, uh, to connect to society, and um, to understand the different views and about collaboration, so that our students learn how to collaborate. And like what we said before, we think we need to collaborate to become a better future, but we also should talk with our students. And actually, I think a lot of our students want this, so we should do it like that. So um, that was my second point that I wanted to make. Um, so um, open education, for us, it's not equal to open educational resources. That's obviously a very important part, and we have to think about how we want to do it because there are a lot of risks involved. Not so much in that we don't want to share, but what do we share and do we reach our goal? If we just share our materials, we think we don't. So we really need to talk about that. And we also think that we should think beyond that and think on the content and that we should also commit to get education that is directed at open minds and open attitudes well, for our staff. So that we should start there because obviously we are not all used. We haven't been educated 
in that way, I mean our staff and we ourselves, but we also need to think about how we do that within our educational culture so that we stimulate our students to take different perspectives, to understand differences, and also take their role uh, within society uh, for that. So uh, again, we need to commit to open education. All of us in some previous sessions, I think it's so important that it gets the equal recognition besides research, uh, because I thought I was really pleased with the declaration because I thought it was more aimed at education than at research. And, well, at least in the Netherlands, it's still more about research than education. But I notice also here very often it still is about research when we talk about it. So I'm, I really appreciate the fact that we are aimed at open education. But to do it in a successful way, we need to look at how we want to share our uh, open educational resources resources and furthermore I really think we should look further than only the or and um, take away the obstacles in the access to our education but also because go beyond that and sharing knowledge um, beyond only sharing the, the resources and um, go to education that helps students find their way to uh, an open mind and an open attitude so thank you so much Thank you so much, Leonique and Maria, for giving us so much food for thought. Could I just ask our audience, and then we'll also check what's happening online with our participants, can I just ask for some reactions, please? You've given us so much to think about. Who would like to share what, what they heard and, and your thoughts on this? Yes, please. And if you can also just share who you are so we know who's who, who's who in the room. Um, so, my name is Claire Quinn, I'm a professor in natural resource management at the University of Leeds and, um, and I was kind of uh, really struck about um, the role of academics and, and lots of the discussions that I've had both in these, uh, in these sort of sessions and, and more informally is, a, is about how difficult it is to change academics. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, and to get them to, to do things differently and, and to think differently. And, um, and I think, to a certain extent, that's, that's definitely true. Um, and I think because historically we have this kind of idea that we are kind of fonts of knowledge. Um, and so our worth is in what we know and in that knowledge and, and how um, we impart that to students. And therefore, making that knowledge open then kind of gets to the heart of how we think of ourselves as, as academics. But um, what struck me is that um, I've spent my uh, whole life being interdisciplinary. I talked about this in a previous session. Um, and it's interesting the kind of fight against this idea that as an academic you have to have disciplinary expertise. And actually, my expertise is in the space in between, is connecting disciplines together. That's where my expertise lies. But, but it's really difficult because everybody expects you to be an ecologist or a social scientist and not necessarily somebody who tries to connect those and have expertise. And I think that shift in thinking is also really important when we're thinking about open research um, and knowledge and how we work with our students. Because then it's not about what you know, your expertise is in guiding students through it, in making connections, in the, the skills to engage with knowledge um, as opposed to the knowledge itself. Um, and I think, again, that requires a kind of shift in thinking around how academics value themselves. And so I think we need to think about that in terms of how we structure our universities around departments and so on, but also how we support and reward and encourage our academics in terms of how we value them. And if we value them for what they know versus the skills uh, that they have. And those are two different things, I think. Thank you so much. 
fantastic points. We just go online briefly to make sure that um, our colleagues can join us. Emma, what is the contribution? Does someone want to you read it out or no? So we are going to ask Tania to turn on her camera and a microphone as she's got something to contribute. There she is, yeah. Yes, thank you. Hi, I'm Tania from Universidad Nacional Autónoma de México, UNAM. And I believe that can sure include affirmative element that is to make universities commit to training in open science, in the importance of making knowledge for equitable, in generating more horizontal research methodologies, and in how to use open resources for teaching. No? So to encourage universities to train their authorities on the subject so they can identify its richness and at the same time allocate more resources of all kinds to it, economic, human, technological, as well as train their teachers and students, carry out dissemination campaigns, think uh, about courses, workshops, space for discussion on open science and other uh, topics about we are thinking about in this in this place. Thank you so much. Some great solutions coming in. I'll ask one or two more people and then I want us to look at, okay, what challenges do we want to work on this afternoon and what solutions can we then agree on that we can take forward? But I didn't want to stop the conversation. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, it has been uh, Antonio Martinez Arboleda, University of Leeds. Um, it has been really interesting to hear uh, your contributions and I'm, I'm going to try to link it a little bit with the theme of the, one of the themes of the, of the summit. Because um, what Leonic was saying about uh, sharing for the sake of sharing as a um, sort of compliance with an internal mechanism, you are absolutely right. Yeah? I always thought that uh, sharing was a sort of um, proxy for openness because it's a, it is a start. And I believe that we need to give it some value in that respect. But don't you think and this is for everybody, don't you think that the fact that we are here talking not just about open education resources and open education, but also about equality, diversity, inclusion in education, and also about open practices within research is the answer to the question? Because uh, clearly, one of the topics here, one of the themes here is the culture mm, in the academic world. And looking at knowledge equity more holistically by looking at these three different elements um, will help us to give that a step forward in qualitative terms. So I wonder if, if you agree with that or if you think this is not the way. Uh, where do we start? Do we start with, by promoting sharing or do we need to look at it holistically and start working in different fronts at the same time? Thank you. Thank you. Leonique, did you want to come back to that? Was it a question for Leonique? Everyone? For, for I think it was men meant for everyone. So although I obviously <laughs> want to answer, I, I can imagine I also would love to hear other people yeah. react on that. Yeah. Well, there. Thank you. Hi, I'm uh, Wilma van Wezenbeek. I'm a director of student educational affairs at uh, Vrije Universiteit uh, Amsterdam. And um, I completely agree with you, Antonio. Um, I just thought um, when some of us were at the Global Open Education Conference in Nantes, there was a very nice presentation, there were more, but the one I mentioned is from Finland, where they actually uh, refer to, if we talk about actions, to have a, not only a policy for uh, open education resources, but also for open educational practices. And that together, probably also with working on an open culture, you get to something that you could call open education, right? So, so I think I completely agree. There was one other thing that, that, that crossed my mind uh, uh, when you were speaking, uh, Leonike, and that's um, when I was in, uh, working as library director in Delft and we were um, doing a roadshow um, years ago on open access and open science. Um, we noticed that there was some uh, resistance when we uh, used the word open with data. And then we started to change that and we talked about fair uh, data. 
And I think with educational resources, you actually also really want them to be findable, accessible, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. And I think that's the part that I missed in the declaration, that we also really want to stimulate reuse, because that's the whole purpose. So that was the comment. And perhaps the word fair could also be helpful in the education resources discussion. Yeah, great. Thank you very much for your point. One more, and then I'll, I mean, we're discussing many challenges, so two more, and then we go to the challenges because you're, you're formulating them already, and I can see some strategies coming out. It would be great if we can get to that today. So I'm Kate Petherbridge from White Rose Libraries, White Rose University Press. And just to pick up on, on what's just been said, I think that the, the reusable element is something that we need to make sure is at the top of our minds as we go through this, because we can make things as open as possible, but if they're not then reused and picked up, it, it, it does become a tick box exercise. And so actually, in terms of how we, we, we look at that, that there is that multi-directional approach to the cultural change, because going back to what we said about how we view the role of the academic and, and, and what the, the role of the university is in, in the education of the students, uh, we, we've been so used as institutions to ring fencing things and to protecting them, and this is what we do. And actually the value is really in sharing that and everybody benefiting from what everybody does. And I think that we, we still, sort of struggle with that second step of open. We're very good at understanding now about making research open and starting to look at making resources open, but actually that cultural change about then encouraging the reuse and seeing it as that information commons is something that, that this, this initiative should really help to drive. Thank you. So there's something about increasing reuse of learning materials. Was it? But it's more than learning materials, isn't it, for everything? Yeah. And I want to just pick up on your point about the fairness. Do you want to just come back? Because I didn't want to lose that point. When he said... Yeah. Try, to also adapt, uh, try also to adapt the word uh, FAIR, or the acronym FAIR, for um, education, as, has, as the way we've done for research data. already moving into the challenges. Yes, Het. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay, and then Het, you come next. Yeah, sorry, uh, uh, I sorry, overlooked uh, you there. Uh, it's Javier from University of Salamanca. Uh, I'm going to step, I think, back before everything mm -hmm. uh, open education. But when Leonik was saying something regarding, uh, like in the Netherlands, uh, it's like a strong focus on research. Perhaps one of the problems that we perceive is that we can ask ourselves to what extent education is valued at the same time as research. Because we're thinking about opening our education, open research and so, but uh, we might perceive it as, a, as our main mission and purpose, but is it? I, I mean, to me it is, but... Uh, Are you saying there is, you see too much leaning towards the research agenda? Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm a little bit nervous, so I'm sorry <laughs> if I struggle to find the words. I'm Yet Weingart, I'm her daughter, <laughs> and I'm actually a student at the University of Arts in Utrecht, and I'm listening and wow, uh, <laughs> you are doing such a good job, all of you. And um, what I was thinking, uh, what a, maybe a very important question is, um, not to for forget, I know it's the most important question, but um, why are you doing this? Because as a student, I think it's so important to have open education and I know uh, to learn more about other uh, disciplinaries and to have, I, I know it's all for me in the end, um, but <laughs> it's a little bit, it's weird to say this, but I think it's 
very important to think about what is what do you want to accomplish in the end uh, because okay open sharing everything it's very important but just sharing everything is not useful if everyone has everything it's uh, yeah what do you have then so what do you want to accomplish and how how do you want to accomplish this yeah Thank you for reminding us for a very fundamental yeah. question, you know. Why are you doing this, you know? Free isn't always best. Um, yeah. Um, Christina Ranzi from the University of Leeds. Yes, wonderful to have you here and have that perspective. And I think it reminded us maybe that we should have more students here, actually, um, as part of the conversation if we talk about co-creation and students as partners. So thank you for coming along. <laughs> um, I just wanted to go briefly back to um, um, the discussion on uh, OER and is it about content production or creation <coughs> or practices. I think there is maybe um, an opportunity to look at it from another angle. Um, while I'm very much against the creating more stuff because there's a lot out there already. I think there is an opportunity there to remind ourselves that we learn a lot through making and actually co-creating, especially with our students as a collaborative process with the purpose, to go back to what your daughter just said, uh, I think might be something that we have uh, underused. Um, and I think that is probably the most valuable because we can create not just stuff and fill, I don't know, uh, repositories and websites, etc., with stuff that nobody's using. But if we link that then back to what is needed, I think the learning experience will be richer, uh, the purpose will be clearer, the motivation will be much higher, I think, and we can achieve so much more, I think. Um, I was going to say something, but you said it, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I think, um, what would that goal be? I mean, I've, I've come here to think about how can open education um, narrow that gap, that inequity gap. So how can we make higher education more equitable? That could be... I mean, open education is so clearly a means to help us forward. So how could we do that? So for me, uh, to go away thinking, how, how could we take steps forward? Um, and that's also a very big topic, yeah? You could go all over the place with it. But um, uh, we, we heard uh, from you, so with, with the UNESCO OER recommendation, but also the... Um, uh, the SDGs, etc. There is this real need for more equity, and open education. It's it's just so obvious that that we need to we need to um, exploit uh, these uh, calls from governments to move forward um, and to engage with our communities in our institutions to build more equity through these tools and through these collaborations. So, um, yeah, it would be great to think about, well, how could we do that? Yeah, and you know what? That is a wonderful way to say, let's get practical. <laughs> because we have 15 minutes, and our task is this afternoon, after having had wonderful conversations, and I think we agree on so many things, but now the crunch point is, what actions can we think of practical things that we can commit to today as part of Ken to address those challenges that we've been discussing for the last hour? So that's where I'm coming from. And I'd be really interested to see what practical ideas do you have? How can we make a difference? And if you tell me what it is about, I can write it down because we have to have three action points at the end of our session. So I think that one of the first things we could look at is, is the thought about applying the FAIR principle to open education. That feels like a concrete thing that we could, we could implement. And that speaks to lots of the things we've spoken about, including the point that you made about what is it for, what's all the free stuff for. 
because it's not about it being free stuff. It's about it being reusable and, and you build on it in lots of different ways. And I think that we lose that, as, as you say. And so by really doing something concrete with the fair system, that, that would help us to, to combat that mass of stuff with no actual implications. And can you go one step further for me? How can we... What do we need to do that we can apply it? I mean, who do we need to involve? Who do we need to convince? What are some steps we could take? I mean, it feels like something that it would be a leadership commitment in, in some ways. It, it feels like a policy, but it's also a cultural shift. Um, I don't have the answer to how you make the cultural shift, because if I did, I would be sitting here. Yeah. I'd be stood up there. Yeah. <laughs> So, so is, is this something that you think institutions could commit to and say, OK, that's what we're working on next? Is that something we're suggesting here? Could I maybe add to that? Because yeah. I'm wondering... So I absolutely agree. Uh, fair principles for open education would be ideal. But, you know, they are still working really hard to define what fair means for research data. How do we mm. find things? How do we make them accessible? How are they interoperable? And there are millions of euros of EU projects going in to find, you know, how do we operationalize that? But the principles themselves, I think, are really good. And so on a high level, we could uh, promote that. But I still think we should think about what does that mean? And we also need to have, and that's what uh, this network perhaps could do, uh, working groups to try and work on some of that, yeah? yeah, yeah. How do we make things more findable? How do we make them more interoperable and reusable, right? So uh, bringing these good practices, how people are doing this in different countries. So could this network think, I mean, there's a, a wonderful network called the Research Data Alliance that has been doing lots of work on FAIR uh, with hundreds, if not thousands of people, uh, um, you know, for free. Uh, dedicated for years um, so we could think about how how can we work on some of these things you know to dig a little bit deeper than yeah, yeah. and I understand you know I mean we, we have an hour this afternoon you know we won't resolve any of that but having a way to to go forward and seeing you know, what is feasible and what needs more work and working groups. And we have Ken, you know, that could yeah. be a really good thing to do. Excellent, yeah, perhaps, thank you. Perhaps that you can also st always start with something. Yeah. <laughs> and for instance, perhaps there are five um, ideas that, that will match with the FAIR principles that we could define very quickly. And one of them, for instance, is every resource should have a digital object identifier. Yeah, that makes it interoperable in a way. So, so I mean, you don't need to make it very complicated. Start with yeah. a few first steps. Yeah. Thank you for that. Who else has some things, suggestions, that we could move from the big ideas to something actionable as, as a result of today? Chrissy? Chrissy? Yeah. Yeah, no, it's okay, you're getting it. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> Fiona is running. <laughs> Thank you. Are we looking for ideas that can be implemented in practice? Yes. Or are we Something concrete. We want to make sure we end the day with some concrete things that we suggest we, we can commit to, we can do, as a result of all these wonderful discussions we had today. Okay, if we think about opening up education, uh, I'm going back to Leonique's talk about collaboration. I think there's something very easy that we can do. We can create connected classrooms. I mean, and that's not a new idea. There are many colleagues around the world who have been doing that uh, for many years now because the pedagogy is there and the technology for around 20 years, the frameworks, etc. So I think how can we awaken, I think, our colleagues and harness the opportunities that are there to make learning and teaching exciting, stimulating, and meaningful. Yeah. And you said a word I'm not an expert in open education. You said a word I don't know. Connected? Oh, connected. Is that, is that a. Ah, connected. Connected, yeah. 
Ah, collect, yeah, connected. Yeah, connected. to collaborate. So you have yeah. practitioners oh, working together. Yeah, okay. No policies yeah. needed, no yeah. agreements, nothing. Just get them together to learn. Wouldn't that right. be exciting? What does our student say? <laughs> I think she, uh, yeah, she agrees. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also wanted to uh, go a step uh, further, or uh, I completely agree with what you say, but about collaboration, I also think that the classroom is a perfect place for that, but also for sharing our materials, it would be good to start up to collaborate within a network, so that could be the CAN, but also we have a lot of other networks, but also global networks, maybe to start that up, to work on education and, and work together in uh, open educational materials, because I really appreciate the FAIR approach, but again, that's really aimed at sharing, which is good, but it has, his <laughs> has yeah. its risks. So again, um, I think the collaboration would be really a good start also. So in the classroom, but also maybe just between teachers um, in sharing their materials or collaborating on. And also, I think this morning was mentioned to, to learn from each other. So also in a global context, to learn from all these ways, both ways from the students and all these also underrepresented groups to, to uh, enrich all our knowledge in that way, yeah. I think is really important. Yeah, thank you so much. One and then one. There's a lot here about, isn't it, about collaboration, coming together. And I think, you know, having had such a wonderful day today makes us realise how much we miss that. And it's so nice also to do it in person again. So how can we continue with this? Because we need the space to have those conversations and these discussions, don't we? So I was just thinking of something uh, concretely also within this network. Um, so the reuse aspect, I think, is really important. And with the diversity and equity uh, as the goal, could we collect some reuse use cases so where we are really pushing the boundaries and helping uh, um, be more diverse and be more inclusive with our open educational resources and by working together and showcasing those and sharing those together in the community i mean that could be something that we could do quite easily and so demonstrating what we are doing for a more equitable um society or higher education system, yeah? So these could be very small tools, uh, uh, practices, all sorts of things of different shapes and sizes from different institutions. And then we can use those in our advocacy in our own institutions. So that would be, you know, as the network, we can create this new knowledge base of you know the value of reuse because i think that is a big challenge here with open education uh and it's true it's it's more an issue in open education than it is with open research uh, or at least open access um so i think that uh if if we could demonstrate the great things about the the, the use cases of reusing um oer i think that that could be really valuable thanks Great, thank you. And we'll take two more, and then I want us as a group to decide. We have so many ideas, you know, which ones are we agreeing we will tackle first? Okay, so uh, putting the students at the center of the learning process, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I want to highlight that perhaps if we want to make it open and participatory and reusing materials, perhaps we can put the focus on uh, reusing, but with a critical way of improving them. Because if simply reusing them doesn't make sense, so here you have these materials, do something with them. And going back to the idea that Marisol has mentioned, that I am another you, uh, what about this kind of active learning methodologies like Jigsaw, where students have a piece of the knowledge by that by cooperating with their colleagues, they all together get the whole picture of the problem, the solution, the alternatives, and so on. Um, because perhaps if we, offer, if we offer them the whole bunch of knowledge, it's too much. But if we have to focus only on a piece, you a piece, a piece, a piece, and all together, because these kind of spaces, I don't know you, but we like these kind of spaces for a normal lecture or a normal room. So it is impossible to organize this kind of dynamics uh, for creating open knowledge with all education with students. Okay, I don't know whether you can read my scribbles. Probably not. <laughs> but I can 
I can read it out. So we just get an idea of all the ideas that we've come up with. So there was something about applying the FAIR system approach to open ed, making it a leadership commitment. It requires a big culture shift. And it's a big thing, isn't it? You know, what would that mean? So that would need some clarification. And the idea was, this is such a big topic, it would really require a working group in Kent. That could be something very tangible, couldn't it? Then we looked at, there was something about the research, and, and you brought in the research data line, so there's also other things we can tap into. Then there's something about define simple things, first steps. Awaken our colleagues to make links connect, collaborate. I think, Chrissy, that was your point, wasn't it? Let them get sort of to, to learn together again. Sharing materials in Ken and other networks, so really looking at, you know, what have we got in our network and other networks that we can build on, which makes it so much more impactful than when we always try our own things in our own institutions. So learn from each other. And then there's a piece here about, you know, the collect the reuse cases, small tools, practices. Again, you know, can to take a role here to create a knowledge base via the network. So there's a lot of, you know, knowledge sharing, isn't there? Coming together, learning. So we have one, two, three, four. I wasn't quite sure how we can make this actionable, but I'm very happy to, you know, do you have an idea? How would we make that actionable if we put the students at the center of learning the jigsaw piece approach that you described? How can we take that as an action forward? Yeah. I mean, just as an action, I mean, I like, you know, I know the idea roughly, I like the idea, but what can we do then next to take that forward? I mean, first, disseminate ex experiences. There are many mm -hmm. For example, uh, thinking globally, a virtual exchange that is based on collaborative projects and possibly uh, complementary. Let me, perhaps, perhaps it's, so having students from different places with different backgrounds, working together uh, to find a solution to a problem, you know, uh, or analyzing a project. Someone might know about medicine, someone might know about public uh, administration. Those who don't know about medicine, they don't know about public administration, how to provide uh, funding for an illness from different parts of the planet uh, in, in two weeks. Right. Leonique, wanted, you wanted to come in or did I see this? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, thank you. So I, I really appreciate what you say. So I think that's really about our education. And as I understood, the question is, what can we do tomorrow to start with as, and I think that indeed what was mentioned before, that we could also uh, include more students in this discussion that we have. So that we have here, um, so I think it was said that we can have a working group and talk with, you know, within, but maybe we can just include a number of students from different places also, not only in our education, but also in this whole discussion. There's an element not mentioned in the decoration and talking about lifelong learning. So the students are not just the students that are in our institutes. So the students are out there everywhere. So if we, if we also include that there in our action, that we realize that, and if we include students then in our network, we should definitely also include yeah. other type of students. Yeah? yeah. Lifelong learning. Oh, okay. lifelong okay. learning. I'm all for it. <laughs> Excellent. You know, we, we've done a super job this afternoon. We had 45 minutes. And Maria, you know, I mean, we have a list. Emma, do you agree? We have enough action points. I'm always thinking, you know, Nick wants action points. Here are action points. And several working groups coming out of this. <laughs> now, obviously, in the next thing is I'll be asking, is anyone interested in leading one? You know, setting one up or driving the process. But I'm sure that that will be done you know, in, in the results of, of the conference, of the day to day, and looking for volunteers. So can I just say to you, thank you so much. It's been such a fruitful discussion. Wonderful to have a student here. You know, it feels a bit like um, in, in Holland, when I lived there, we did um, take your daughter or son to school. You know, um, I did that with my children at the international school. So they saw that mum was doing, you know, they learn a lot from that. So thank you so much for all your ideas, commitment, your wonderful stories, and yes, Onwards and upwards. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.